Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a review of the Sailor Le Cool Morion Fountain Pen. Now, I'm going to start off with the strange name. First off, the Sailor Le Cool series of fairly inexpensive Sailor Fountain Pens are um, often based on gemstone names, gemstones. I've covered uh, Garnet and the Rose Quartz version. This is the Morion version. Now, Morion, for those of you who aren't aware it's generally regarded as a, um, a Scottish name for smoky quartz smoky quartz being a gemstone if you want to know the full mineralogy of it then it's basically quartz which has been subjected to high levels of radiation ionizing radiation which turns it a sort of smoky color or a black color um, you can buy irradiated smoky quartz clusters, Brazil, they irradiate their quartz clusters that they dig out of the ground which are clear or milky, subject them to uh, high levels of ionising irradiation and they turn black. So it's a black pen but quite nicely this is a sparkly black pen. I'm going to try and get this in the right light so that you can see the sparkle is not focusing particularly well. There we go. So, there we go. We have got sparkly inclusions throughout the, the cap and the barrel, and the finials. Not so much on the barrel finial if at all I don't think there yeah there are there are a few in there but it is fairly consistent all the way through so in the last few months I have covered some black sparkly fountain pens and I, I, I do quite like them because it adds an extra dimension to what would otherwise normally be a black bodied fountain pen um, I mean there's certainly been the uh, Pelican M205 Moonstone very nice sparkly grey, blackish dark fountain pen, demonstrator type. Um, I have also uh, covered, if I haven't already published the video, the uh, Jinhao X750 Black Shimmering Sands, which is a much more glittery fountain pen than this. But this, as you can see, looks like a black fountain pen. It's only on sort of slightly closer inspection you do notice the uh, sparkly inclusions which predominantly seem to be gold in colour um, I'm not really picking up any other colours in there it seems to be pretty much just gold so understated but just that little bit of sparkle so could be uh, could be the pen for you if you don't want something that's too glittery the pen itself say a little cool I find these are excellent fencing pens. As I've said in my previous reviews of Sailor Le Cool fencing pens, I held off buying a Sailor Le Cool for some time because I watched other reviewers who basically didn't like the way that the Sailor Le Cool wrote. I've had three of these pens so far and I love them. I think they're brilliant writers. They're far better than I actually expected. I thought that they would not be very good, but they're far better than any of the Chinese pens that. Um, I've used at, certainly at this sort of price. These are low cost pens from Sailor. Remember, you're not paying, paying full Sailor prices for one of these pens. And it's a smaller pen, not a pocket pen, but they're good. Nice size. I um, have covered size comparisons in previous reviews, so I'm not going to go on too much about that. I'm just covering this Sailor Morion or smoky quartz if you want uh, edition of the Sailor Le Cool it's relatively small it's not a huge pen it's quite light but it feels fairly solid well built and I'm very very happy with it so let's just talk about <coughs> excuse me the parts of the pen we've got the finial at the end silver cap band the clip which protrudes out of the cap the clip is silver coloured. I find that these, these clips are very functional. They're not too tight, not too slack, reasonably stiff. Uh, down 
here we have got the model name, Le Cool, silver cap band and Sailor Japan on the reverse. And you can see these gold sparkly inclusions in the pen here. So it is an attractive pen, definitely an attractive pen. The barrel then tapers down, silver ring, black finial with some sparkly inclusions in there you can see. Unscrew the cap which takes just over two turns so it's not the quickest. Uh, I've had absolutely no issues with the nib of these pens drying out even if you don't use them for some time these are fitted with fine sailor nibs no other nib, nib options and these are japanese fine so do expect a finer line than a european western fine the section is made of the same material as the cap and the barrel with the inclusions which is really nice to see i'm very happy to uh, to see that that theme continues and the section is a reasonably decent length it is on the it is a touch short and it is flared out at the bottom and I find it a really comfortable section. The threads are just underneath the sort of top area of your fingertips but they're smooth, nothing too, they're not too deep, nothing that really gets in the way, I don't notice them. I hold the pen like this, happy as anything writing with it. There is a tiny step up to the barrel there and as you can see the pen does fit in the hand rather nicely. It's not long, these are smaller pens, they are shorter fountain pens um, and I think that for those people with smaller hands these are a very very nice option. Not a pocket pen, these are not what I would regard as pocket pens by any stretch but they are still usable and I write with these pens on posted. However if you do want to post it, it posts reasonably deeply, not hugely but it's reasonable and it's pretty firm you just give it a slight push and that is now on there and you've got a decent size fountain pen it's not the most girthy but it's not a slim pen it's a nice nice comfortable size girth and everything to hold posted it's really really nice it does not add any back weighting that you can really feel unposted is nice and posted just as nice. I would say that this is actually a pen that I could quite happily write with posted, <coughs> it's just that personally I choose not to. So there you go, there is the pen posted and I, I like it, I think it's a very nice pen. Steel nib, black plastic feed, nothing extraordinary. Unscrew the barrel and of course being a Sailor fountain pen it takes Sailor cartridges or converters. This is the um, black Sailor cartridge that this came with. They do come in a box. So there is the fountain pen. So let's have a look at how this pen writes using my Rhodia paper as usual. Unscrew the pen. As I have already said, the Sailor Le Cool Morion has a fine Sailor steel nib. Nothing more I can really say about that because you don't get any other nib options. So let's have a look at how the pen writes. That skip was me. As far as wetness goes, for a fine Japanese nib, I think it's pretty wet, and it, it, it is, it's, it's a good, good wetness. Not too dry, much, much better than many of the fine nibs that you find on 
Chinese fountain pens and one awful lot smoother. Lays down the ink no problem. As I've said, this is the Sailor Black cartridge that it came with. Reverse writing. I would say probably goes down to a extra fine. And it is very, very smooth and it keeps up and there are no issues whatsoever with the writing in reverse. So do a bit, that's reversed and these are the nib in its normal orientation. So not a great deal of difference, but there is some. It's there as an option if you need a even finer, not the finer line. I would not recommend pushing these nibs. You can just about squeeze out a tiny bit more ink, but these are not designed to flex in any way. So I just would simply say the writing experience with this nib is very, very smooth and reliable. Really, really happy. Now there is some feedback. Sailor nibs do have feedback. As with the other Sailor Le Cool pet fountain pens that I've used, personally, I would say they're all identical. And that's great because there is consistency with these nibs. Three pens, three nibs, all writing exactly the same, all reliable, nothing to do out of the box, good quality, really, really good quality. So my initial thoughts about purchasing a Sailor Le Cool based on what other reviewers had said on YouTube videos I'd seen. Yeah, it, it not in my experience. These are good fountain pens. Now there is, as I mentioned, some sailor feedback. Now that sort of feedback is not scratchiness. There is no scratchiness with this nib, but you do feel it on the paper. And it is more... This is the word... <laughs> I'm going to use a whole wo load of words that you see in the fountain pen community which over the years I've sort of learned actually yeah I know what people mean when they say that there is some toothiness the nib is toothy this nib has got some you, you can feel it on the paper I know it's a fine nib if you have used any of the Chinese fountain pens with a fine nib you get that feedback because it's a fine nib not necessarily because the nib is rough or not smooth it's a fine nib so you've got more perceived scratchiness on the paper but this is smooth this is really really smooth and it, it, it i mean it writes effortlessly no pressure whatsoever it does a good job. It writes and writes and writes, no hard starts, no skipping, the nib doesn't dry out. But there is this sale of feedback, which is not going to be for absolutely everybody. I would say that for the cost of these pens, if you want to experience sale of feedback and see what people are talking about, because many people do like it, I do quite like it. I think I actually prefer Platinum's more pencil-like feedback than this um slightly more extreme toothiness or feedback but nevertheless these are really good everyday writers i use these pens a lot write with them an awful lot pages and pages and they're really really good it's 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 difficult for me or anybody else to explain just what i mean about sailor feedback because it is a definite thing it's not scratchy but imagine the tipping material not being glassy smooth but smooth enough to produce a sensation on the page when you're writing but not scratchy <laughs> it sounds like a complete contradiction but it's really nice some people will really really love this you know people go on about gold nibs and the bounce this is a similar sort of thing. I don't personally get gold nibs in the bounce. It, you know, a bit of springiness, yeah, fine, okay. It's it's all right. I don't see the point in it for my writing. But if you like a feedbacky pen, then I think Sailor is a good option, and the Sailor Le Cool is a very affordable way into experiencing that in what I consider to be a very reliable, nice fountain pen. 
So there we have the review of the sale of the Cool Morion. Now, I definitely like these pens. In fact, I have purchased a couple more, a couple more special editions from a few years ago that are more difficult to obtain in the West now. I like them that much. I really think that these are pens which are definitely worth considering adding to your collection. And if you haven't tried a Sailor Fountain pen before, then I'd certainly recommend the Sailor Lacoul because it is going to give you a good quality, affordable experience into the world of Sailor Fountain pens. So yeah, definite thumbs up from me. I like these pens an awful lot. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you found it useful. And um, don't forget to subscribe, turn on all notifications, to see the rest of my uh, videos when they go uh, live. So thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.